Ooh, chapter four. Oh boy. April 1867. Oh, hey, look, Okita. Cherry blossoms have bloomed. They're magnificent, look. The seasons changed and spring came. Kyoto was filled with the cherry blossoms and the whole city took on a festive atmosphere. Surrounded by the gentle cheer of spring, it, my footsteps felt somehow lighter. It's getting warm out and it finally looks like a nice day. So I get that you're all giddy and stuff, but... It'd be nice if you acted with a little more decency right now. <gasps> I turned around to look at my surroundings. The townsmen were looking at me dubiously as I expressed my excitement over the weather. Uh, okay, I'll be careful. Maybe I was facing up because things had quieted down a bit and I let my guard down. Hey, Okita. Hmm. In that narrow alleyway over there... There seems to be a few Ronin that saw us and snuck away. Don't waste your energy on them. They're small potatoes. Really? If they were Imperial Nationalist guys, then they wouldn't just run off like that. They'd be more confident. The guys who take off like that when we show up are almost always just small-time punks. I see. But honestly, I don't think there are any Ronin left in Kyoto with the balls to start something with us. The Shinsengumi's gotten pretty famous around Kyoto, hasn't it? That uniform stands out a lot, too. Well, could be infamous, depending on who you ask. When the men wore their uniforms, people seemed to notice them at first glance, which at first probably seemed like a good thing, but... Their uniform had become a symbol, but there was some argument among the Shinsengumi about if they should adopt a new one. Some people, such as Ito, felt that the uniform should be changed because it wasn't fashionable. Is Ito back from the Imperial Territories yet? Yeah, I think so. I can't say I'd have minded if he just stayed out there, though. Aw, don't be like that. He went to go recruit some of his friends and acquaintances, right? That's what he says, but I gotta wonder how far he really went. I didn't hear the details, but I heard he went to more places than he originally planned. If he put in all that effort, then he must really care about the Shinsengumi, right? That's what you think. Uh, am I wrong? No, not really. He said it in a suggestive way. Kondo's too nice. He should just kill Ito. You really shouldn't, Okita. How could you joke about killing one of your companions? A companion, huh? <laughs> he fell silent. Ever since he had first arrived, Okita and the rest had never seemed to like Ito much, but when he said it aloud in public, it still surprised me. I glanced around to make sure no one had been paying attention. Oh. There, in the crowd. A face I'd seen before. I stopped walking. Karu? The face I looked back could easily have been mine. There was no way I could have ever mistaken that face. But no sooner than when I spotted her had she disappeared, melting into the crowd. Kaoru! Hey! He made a grab for my arm, but I'd already moved out of his reach. I might get in trouble for it, but if I didn't go quickly, I'd lose her. Sorry, Okita! There's something I have to do! I caught a glimpse of his confused face as I ducked into the crowd. Ah. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell her not to run off without permission? Why can't she look at this from my point of view? Sorry, BB. I ran through the crowd as fast as I could, bobbing and weaving around citizens going about their business until at last I caught up to her. You're... She was Kaoru, no mistake. What's the matter? You seem to be out of breath. S sorry for surprising you, that is. Um, Kaoru, do you remember me? Yes, you were with the Shinsengumi. I remember you. May I ask you something? My, what is it? I gulped. 
I knew I had to choose my words carefully when asking her. One of the Shinsengumi saw a girl who looked like me at the Sanjo Ohashi Bridge a while ago. Could that have been... you? I don't know. I do go by Sanjo Ohashi fairly often. But if I were there, would that have been a problem? Oh. I was embarrassed for asking her what seemed to be an irrelevant question, but her eyes thinned. Perhaps what you truly wanted to ask me is... Whether I've been there at night. Am I right? Uh, could it be? If it was an autumn night, and you got in the Shinsengumi's way... Then you and I are gonna need to have a little talk. I don't want to give away all the details, but it ends with your death. Oh! Okita! I hadn't realized he caught up with me so quickly. Oh, you're Okita from the Shinsengumi. Thank you for helping me the other day. She bowed, but Okita didn't even seem to notice. So, you gonna answer the question? Were you there that night? Okita wore the same half-smile he always did, but his body was as tight as a bowstring, ready to have his blade in hand at a moment's notice. My death? Please, don't say scary things like that. Lots of people pass by Sanjo Ohashi during the day. At night, though. I don't go near it because of the notice board stuff. I can't believe you suspect me just because my face happens to look like someone else's. She sadly looked down and I rushed to shake my head. Oh, of course. I understand. Sorry for asking something so rude. I guess it really wasn't her. Huh, I felt embarrassed for even doubting her for a second, so I apologized. Man, you're so easy. Just like that, you're going to believe her. Even if she was the culprit, what makes you think she would be like, Oh, that's right, I did do it. Well, why did you trust her so easily? Is it because she looks like you, or because she's a girl? I didn't have an answer. Kyra then took one step back. Can I go now? I have to be somewhere. Excuse me. Karu. She turned and ducked away, disappearing back into the crowd. Had I done the right thing, I wondered in covering for her. I was pondering whether or not I should give chase again when I heard Okita begin to cough. <coughs> Okita? Uh, are you okay? <coughs> Okita! Stay back! As I stepped toward him, he threw out a hand and twisted his face upward to glare at me. <coughs> I'm... I'm fine. S just... stay there, okay? It was the sheer force of his personality that stopped me, not just his words. For a little while, he coughed as if his lungs were going to collapse. Eventually, his coughing slowed, then began to subside. <sighs> his cough finally ended, and he wiped his sweat and looked up. Okita, is something wrong? Like what? I mean, why don't we find somewhere to rest? You don't look too well. Oh, I was just tired. I mean, you did make me run all the way here. And besides, we're in the middle of a round. We have no time to rest. But... No buts. I'm fine. Now. About the girl. Kaoru. Asking her about the thing with the notice board was important. I agree with you. But even- no, because of how important that is, you shouldn't have run off on your own like that. What if she had been an enemy of ours? What if she had accomplices hidden nearby? Could you have handled it alone? Well... Did you even consider that possibility? That she'd planned to lure you here? There's not that many people here. No one would notice if you screamed. It's a great spot for an ambush, you know. You're right. She hadn't tried to attack me, but Okita was right. 
Next time I might not be so lucky. I could have easily run right into a trap. You need to be more careful, all right. I can take care of you, but without me around, you're just a useless kid. I gripped my fists and looked down. <sighs> Sorry. I felt bad causing him extra stress, so I apologized, and he sighed. <sighs> Man, I'm not the type to lecture either. Um, I... Stop being so timid. You can rely on us when you need to. I've gotten pretty used to saving your ass by now. A couple more times isn't going to mean much. <laughs> he let out a snort of laughter. I'm gonna need to make good on that offer tonight. Before we split. That night, after everyone else had gone to bed, I lay awake thinking about what had happened. I couldn't forget what Okita had said. A useless kid. He was right. Compared to the captains, no. Even compared to the weakest Shinsengumi foot soldier, I was pathetic. <sighs> I had been lying there, staring at the ceiling. My actions today were no doubt reckless. I mean, if this happened a little while ago, I'm sure I would have been killed, no questions asked. The fact that I got away with just a lecture shows that they're starting to trust me a little more, but... I couldn't go on like this. Tomorrow I start working harder. But no sooner had I closed my eyes... What?! There was a crash from the hallway outside my room. I rolled up and out of my bed just as the door exploded into my room. Standing in the hall was one of the Shinsengumi soldiers. Um, is something wrong? I called out to him despite being incredibly alert and guarded, but the soldier remained quiet. Did you need something? Blood. Huh? I squinted to get a clearer picture. Just then, his hair instantly turned white. Blood. I need blood. His eyes were ominously red, and he looked directly at me. <gasps> he was one of the Furies. <laughs> Give me blood! To top it off, he was completely mad. Just like the warrior I saw that one night in Kyoto. I had to call for help. I couldn't possibly face a deranged superhuman monster on my own. I inhaled, preparing to call for help. <sighs> no, I couldn't call for help. If I did, then I could risk jeopardizing the Shinsengumi secret about the Furies. That would spell disaster for the Shinsengumi. I had to find another way. The Fury, unfortunately, was not similarly encumbered by doubts. Ah! His sword hissed through the air, and I felt the metal of its blade burn into the flesh of my arm. Gah! A sharp pain seared into thought from my wound. The Fury saw my, blo my blood dripping, and his eyes became even more mad. I got God again. Blood sprang from the cut. I pressed down on it desperately with my free hand, but to no avail. Thick red liquid spilled between my fingers, fled down my arm and onto the floor. Yes. Blood. Give me blood. The fury became increasingly erratic, and he started licking the bloodstained sword. He began to creep toward me, his movements odd and jerky like a massive spider. Oh no! My back slammed against the wall. I'm going to die. Just when I prepared myself for death, I suddenly remembered Okito's words from earlier that day. Stop being so timid. You can rely on us when you need to. Okita, everyone. Someone! Help! <laughs> Blood. Blood! He was down on his hands and knees, licking my spilt blood off the floor. There was no samurai there. It seemed what little humanity he had left him entirely. <laughs> I used his distraction to gain distance from him. Please, I beg to any god who might be listening, let someone come! Not enough. Not enough! He looked up from the floor. My sleeve was soaked in blood from the cut on my arm. 
His eyes locked onto it, and I saw them light up with animalistic hunger. His grin was a nightmarish thing. <laughs> yes, that! Give me more of your blood! He kicked the floor roughly and came charging at me. No! There was no doubt he was going to kill me. I froze. Get down! Don't look up until I tell you to! I heard a voice from nearby, and I immediately followed the orders and ducked. Grah! The Fury seemed to be shocked to see Hijikata coming out of nowhere. The Fury spun to attack Hijikata, but the commander's sword was faster. Ah! His twisted cry reverberated from the room's walls. Gah! Ah! He writhed in agony, but his wound started to heal immediately. Get over here! Now! Y yes As I ran to his side, I heard other footsteps pounding down the hallways. You alright, Chizuru? Hey! Isn't he- He's... The warrior who had to drink the water of life the other day. He's too far gone. We can't let him live. At some unspoken signal, a chorus of blades slid from their scabbards. Shen! Sano! Don't screw this up! Who the hell do you think we are, Heisuke? If a captain can't take out a simple soldier, even if he is a fury, he'd have to resign. Assuming he wasn't dead. They fanned quickly, circling the wounded soldier. There was no escape. No hard feelings. Ah! The captains all attacked at once, and the Fury was killed almost instantly. The excitement was over. Or so I thought. But it hadn't been only the captains who'd heard my cry for help. Ever so calmly, Ito enters the room. Oh, who's causing such a ruckus at this hour of night? Ito! Ito rubbed his still sleepy eyes, stepped into the room, and froze. What's going on here? Damn it. I've seen that soldier before. I thought he was sentenced to death the other day for breaking the code. And look at all of this blood! Are you guys responsible for this? Ito, it's not like that. This is... What is it not like? Why have our captains cut down one of their own men? Explain this at once! What happened here? Ito was fuming and screaming. My apologies. My lack of discipline is at fault here. Sanon? Seeing Sanon, Ito's eyes grew wide. S -s 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 sanon what are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead! The captains fell silent. Eventually. I guess we can't keep it a secret any longer. Yukimura, you step out. You can use my room for the night. I know me being here won't do anything, but I wonder if they'll be alright. Would they be able to explain the situation enough to Ito so that he wouldn't freak out? There was so much to worry about, but Hichikata looked at me sternly. Did you not hear me? I said get out. Okay. I was worried, but I knew there was nothing else I could do, so I left the room. Alright, here comes the old splitteroo. Huh? Is it morning already? The birds chirping woke me up. I shot up, thrown off initially because the ceiling was unfamiliar to me. I remembered that Hijikata had told me to stay in his room for the night. And at the same time, the events of last night were beginning to flood into my mind. The warrior who'd gone mad. The pain of the blade slicing my arm. I touched my right arm wrapped in bandages. I couldn't feel a throbbing pain anymore, so... I took off my bandage to see my injury. Of course it's healed. 
What had been an ugly open wound the night before was now little more than a faint white line. In a few days, even that would be gone. I wouldn't need any bandages anymore, but... Well, I guess it's good that the wound is gone, but if anyone sees this... I wrapped myself back up again. It'll be inconvenient to wear, but... I'm going to pretend to still have this injury. I wonder what everyone is doing. I decided I'd head to the common room to see what's going on. Oh, you. Ito, Miki, and... Saito and Heisuke, what are you guys doing so early in the morning? Well, considering what happened last night, I'm not a heavy enough sleeper to have the kind of beauty sleep I'd need with that noise. You were injured, right, Yukimura? How's your injured arm doing? Well, uh, it's not that bad. Is that so? Well, I'm glad. Huh? His mood was almost the polar opposite of the previous night. He seemed now to be in rather high spirits. Um, Ito, has something happened? <laughs> Would you like to know? Uh, yes. I won't tell you, but I suppose you might have an idea, though. Isn't that right, Toto, Saito? What? I cocked an eyebrow at Heisuke and Saito. Uh, yeah, I guess. The moment our eyes met, he looked away. That seemed odd. Um, Saito? You have no need for this information just now. Unlike his companion, Saito met my gaze straight on, but his eyes were flat and utterly devoid of any emotion. Have you forgotten about our snow bunny memories? It was as if you put up a wall. What the hell? That's a little cold of you, having that pass for a goodbye, isn't it? Or did you want to get out of here as soon as possible or something? Get out of here? Saburo, watch your mouth. We'll be on our way now. Good day, Yukimura. Goodbye, Yukimura. Later. And then they were gone, leaving me wondering just what had happened. Hey, Yukimura. Are you sure it's all right for you to be up and about already? I'm fine. I slept really well and I feel a lot better. And my wound doesn't seem to be as deep as it looked. That's great. I'm sorry about what happened to you, though. It's all right. Anyways, I ran into Ito on my way here. He was acting very peculiar. Did something happen? Inoue and Shimada looked at one another, both wearing troubled expressions. Oh, so you saw them, eh? Both Ito and Miki were behaving rather strangely. And Heisuke and Saito were acting kind of strangely, too. I was starting to feel concerned, looking at the two of them for an answer. After some thought, Shimada opened up. Yeah. Well, Ito and some others are leaving. What? Leave? They're going to form a new group, different from the Shinsengumi. Is... is that okay? He had a meeting this morning with the chief and commander Hijikata. Guardians of the Imperial Two? Yes. I intend to take some of my comrades and leave. We will be appointed official guardians of the Imperial Mausoleum. I have been considering such a move for some time now, but after last night's excitement, I didn't think it'd work out anymore. I knew when I joined the Shinsengumi that my imperialism might not be welcome, but I thought we could work past that. I see now that I was mistaken. Just spit it out, Ito. Basically, you want to split up the Shinsengumi. Who's the one that has been deceiving me for the past three years? If you insist, then I will do as you ask. 
You must remember, however, that last night's incident is a result of orders from the Shogunate. We cannot allow you to reveal this secret. Then I propose a deal. Allow me to depart, peacefully, that is. And in turn, I will remain silent. I also wish to bring several of your men with me. Very well. But anyone you wish to take must agree to leave. Of course. I will naturally maintain the fiction that we intend to continue to cooperate with one another. A stance that will no doubt benefit both of us. Cooperation. Fine. Toshi, what do you think? It's your decision, not mine. Then... Heisuke and Saito? Yes. They are leaving with Ito. I confess I'm rather surprised. I mean, I understand Heisuke since he's known Ito for some time, but I was not expecting it from Saito. No. Then... would that mean I could never see them again? Don't worry. Remember what I said? We're going to keep relations amicable between our two organizations. Kondo. It was kind of him to try and comfort me, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was going to befall the Shinsengumi and its members. You aren't going to let the men interact with the guard, though, right? Of course not. He gets to leave, but that doesn't mean I'm going to let him get away with whatever he wants. But... Is this really okay? Ito and the others leaving, I mean. Ito and his men leaving isn't a problem. Although, I was a little surprised that Heisuke and Saito decided to go with that snake. Uh, I would say it was more than a little. But I guess all of this comes from our own faults, and our inability to keep them happy. From there, the conversation moved to a discussion of politics that was beyond my ability to follow. And what could I have said anyway? The decision had been made, and there was nothing I could have said to change it. I got up quietly and left the common room. I never thought something like this could happen. I looked up to the sky, watching the clouds form in streaks above me, and then lowered my gaze. It seemed like just yesterday that we were all living our normal lives at the compounds. Then, all of a sudden, we've arrived at today, helpless as our troops split amongst themselves. I couldn't wrap my head around it. However, even with all of my confusion, I was especially worried about... the guard. What worried me most were the people leaving with Ito. Heisuke and Saito. Would I ever get to see them again? Was this... goodbye? I wanted to know what they were thinking. Were they still around? As I stood up to go look for them, I spotted Yamazaki walking toward me. Help me, Yamazaki, you're my only hope. Yukimura. Oh, Yamazaki. I heard you were injured. Are you feeling better? Um, yes, I'm fine. Have you, uh, seen Heisuke and Saito? Toto and Saito. His expression turned grim at the mention of their names. It was quite clear how he felt about the men who'd chosen to leave the Shinsengumi with Ito. <sighs> Sorry for asking. I turned quickly to leave, but he held out a hand to stop me. I saw them going off that way. Thanks. If you want to speak with them, do it soon. Once they've left, you won't be allowed to talk to them. Yes. Thank you, Yamazaki. There they were! Heisuke! Saito! They turned around with reserved expressions. Hey. Haha. <laughs> well, shoot, looks like you found us. Oh. Did you want to be left alone? I can go. No, no, of course not. I, uh, wanted to talk to you too. Good. I imagined we'd see you before we left. If you have something to say, say it. R right 
I just wanted to hear it from you. Why are you leaving the Shinsengumi? Why, huh? Hmm. He scratched up his face and scratched nervously at the side of his nose. Well, Ito and I are from the same school. He's my senior, obviously. He joined the Shinsengumi at first because I invited him. So I feel like I'm kind of... obligated to stick with him, you know? I guess that's it. Heisuke had always struck me as kind, so it was no surprise that he felt he couldn't abandon Ito. Okay, well... I can respect that. But that means you'll leave everyone else behind. You might not ever get to see them again. I'm not really one of Ito's... followers, I guess you might say. But I was and am an imperialist. It wasn't like I'd grown up wanting to work under the Shogunate or something. And considering what's going on with the serum... It just kind of seems like working for somebody like the Guardians of the Imperial Tomb is a better fit for me than working for the Shogunate. I couldn't really think of anything to say, so I kept my mouth shut. After a moment, he continued. I would wanted to just stay here and screw around and have fun with the guys. I mean, we've been together for quite a while, right? His gaze drifted off into the distance, and his profile seemed almost heartbreakingly lonely, but his mouth was a hard line. His mind was made up. What about you, Saito? I looked up at him. Joining Ito and his men serves my own ambition. Are you an imperialist, too? A leader who hopes to unify his people should be one who overcomes any external threats. If the Shogunate forgets its essential role, which is keeping its people safe by expelling all foreign influence, then I have no reason to work for them. So you're saying that Kondo and Hijikata are wrong? That's right. And because you don't agree with them, you're willing to walk away and never see them again? It can't be helped. In order to go with what I believe in, I mustn't be swayed by emotions. But... I... Um, I'm guessing one of these is for Saito and one of these is for, um, Heisuke. I mean, we know Saito is on a spy mission. Maybe we should say we feel betrayed? Because that means we've bought into Saito's lie about going. Or maybe he'll be like, just give me a quick little whisper of, I'm not really <laughs> leaving because of that. I don't know. I'll try this and we'll see where the butterfly lands, shall we? How could you do this to us? We've been together for so long. And now you're just going to abandon us? Please, don't say that. This is hard for us too, alright? The look he gave me nearly broke my heart, and in that moment I suddenly understood how he felt. Oh. I... He was suffering too, perhaps just as much as I was, and yet I'd said such horrible things. No, no. I'm sorry. See you! Oh! Oh, he's okay. And then he was gone, and I was left with my apology still forming on my lips. Hey, SK. How could I have been so inconsiderate? I should have known that it was painful for him, too. Because we worked together once, now we must always work together? You believe that no matter my ambitions, I should remain here, for no other reason than some sense of camaraderie. One must master their emotions, or be mastered by them. To let emotion guide my judgment is the beginning of the end. But, but but can you ignore your feelings so easily? Isn't it hard for you to leave your friends behind? No. If duty requires me to kill a friend, then I will. There can be no hesitation. 
I don't think I could ever understand that. Duty is important to you, I know, but... But still... Was duty the only function of a member of the Shinsengumi? Did they exist only to fulfill that duty, at the exclusion of everything else? That seemed awfully, horribly sad. I wanted to speak, to tell Saito how I felt, but I knew that no matter what I said, it would simply slide off of him, unacknowledged and unwelcome. No butterflies for me. Saito, for his part, said nothing. We stood for a moment, until he moved toward one of the many blossoming cherry trees moving, uh, covering the temple grounds. Oh. Hey, I chose right! Okay, I'm like, does it not matter in the end what I choose to feel? You beautiful boy. How many of these blossoms have I seen since I came to Kyoto, I wonder? <laughs> Cherry blossoms? It must have been my imagination, but I could have sworn that Saito's face as he looked at the blossoms above him was... sad. As time passes, things change. The world, people's ideas, even the Shinsengumi. He reached out gently and let a single petal fall into his palm. For several moments, he simply looked at it. Are... are we changing too? Hmm. He looked up. Our eyes met. Hmm. We have. Is that why you're leaving? Because we've changed? He didn't answer, only gazed quietly up at the cherry blossoms. His mind had been made up long ago. There was nothing I could say that would change it now. Aw, he smiled, though. Even so, that does not mean everything must change. I was surprised, not by his words, but by the small smile that appeared with them. As times change and life changes with it, there are some things which do not change. I believe in those things that do not change. Things that do not change. Yes. And somehow that meant he should go with Ito? It didn't make any sense. What Saito believed in was... Something else. I didn't know what yet, but I could feel it. So long as he didn't change, so long as he was still the man who could look at cherry blossoms and smile, then perhaps it was okay. Even if he was far away... Perhaps our hearts could still feel the presence of the other. It was sad to think that he would no longer be nearby, but... Saito, could you give me that pedal? Oh, gosh! <laughs> Stab me in the heart! Ugh, why don't you do that? Of course. What do you intend to do with it? I won't do anything with it. I just want to keep it. A reminder of my time with him. Aww. <laughs> wow, this this route is like so romantic compared to the other two we've done so far. Oh. That's odd. Here you are, I suppose. Thank you. I'll treasure it. <laughs> 